Hello and welcome to hobby vlog number 76. This week I would characterise as being steady. I've done something pretty much every day, but not a lot on any day. But it's been good. I've been quite busy at work, but I've managed to get just little bits done here and there to progress the projects I'm working on. Uh, I have started a new project with the Encounter Terrain 10x10 beginning, and I made a lot of progress on that, really enjoying that, making use of the 3D printer a bit, uh, but also being creative with that, so not just printing things out, but rescaling them and trying to do a little bit different, and using some slightly different techniques to what I normally do, so I'm enjoying that. Uh, and I've also done a lot of, a lot of progress on the Smaug diorama. Um, yeah, you'll enjoy seeing just how many sequins I'm using. I've run out, put it that way, so I'm waiting for another order to arrive. Probably the best part of this week has been working on the little miniature for Rosie. Uh, I gave it to her this morning and she loved it and that obviously means the world to me as you know. So uh, that was something which was really lovely to get done this week and I've shown you on, in, on this video what it looks like so I hope you like that. As I always say please do leave a comment below, I'd love to hear from you, let me know what you think. Uh, I do reply to every single one of your comments so don't be shy, make yourself known, it'd be lovely to hear from you. And uh, yeah, please do enjoy the video and I'll see you again at the end. Right, I'm happy with how that looks, pretty pleased indeed. And I deliberately selected the bit with the slightly damaged area because I've then been able to, as you can see, put a bit of a chip out on over the decorations and it just makes it look a little bit more interesting. Now I have decided against putting on any uh, of the air dry clay just because I don't think it will actually look good. I think there'll be a mistake. So uh, I'm not gonna bother with that. Uh, what I'm gonna do now is I am going to stick it down and I'm gonna do a couple of things. The first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to get some gator glue and I'm going to apply that to the bottom of this. And what I'm also going to do is I'm going to get some um, cocktail sticks um, and then that will just make it really, really secure. Now the gator glue is pretty strong. Oops, kick something then. The gator glue is pretty strong, uh, but just having um, a little bit more security and stability with the uh, cocktail sticks makes a lot of sense. So let's get that done. Okay, so there it is. And what I need to do is make sure that I have it turned the direction I want it to be turned in. And then press it down. And there we are. We have our column. <laughs> this is huge, isn't it? So once that's dried, I'm going to come along and I'm going to actually fill in some of these gaps just with rolled up newspaper. Um, and I'm going to use a technique that they use on uh, model railway. So I'm going to screw the newspaper up and then use um, just masking tape to tape it down. Once I've filled in all the gaps I'm happy with, then I'll do some modeling compound over the top and then we'll get to near the end. So I will be taping um, cut, um, newspaper into these sections here just to make it a little bit more um, not quite so wasteful on the uh, on the modelling compound. So anyway, I'll let that go off and I'll bring you back for the next step. I'm really, really liking what it's looking like though. So I'm about to get started building up the rest of this um, terrain here. And what I'm going to do first of all though is I'm just going to rough up this PVC underneath using a wire brush just so that if I do have to do any uh, modelling compound it has something to stick to. Which is a horrible sound so I'll stop filming um, but that's what I'm going to do. Once I've done that, I'll bring you back and we will get some paper in and then we'll start with the modelling compound, which I have ready here. Okay, so let's show you how this is going to work. And this is a new technique for me, so I'm hoping that it works well. So I've got some newspaper here, which I've used a, long, a lot for um, going underneath um, my builds. Um, and I have, um, I may as well just use this. Um, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to screw it up. Not that tight. I'm going to place it in where I want it to be and bear in mind that I'm going to come over this with the modelling compound. What I'm then going to do is get some masking tape and just use it to hold it to shape like that. It doesn't need to be stuck down all that well because as I say I'll be coming over the top with the compound but you can see that that is filling that gap very very nicely and going to mean I'm going to have to use far less compound than if I didn't do this. So there we are, so that's the idea. Oh, it's sliding around a lot, this build, it's a bit slippy on the bottom. So I'm gonna do that for the rest of it, gonna fill in like the gap here um, and some more gaps around here. Um, and then when I've finished doing that, I'll bring you back and we'll, I'll show you how I'm gonna do the compound. So I've no idea if this is gonna work or not, <laughs> um, but I've tried it. And if it doesn't work, then at least I've tried it. Um, I can always rip it off and come back in with a bit more polystyrene um, um, uh, expanded polystyrene or whatever and carve it into shape 
which is what I would do if I wasn't trying, wanting to try something new. So I'm just mixing up my modelling compound now. Uh, I don't measure it at all, I just go by feel now. Uh, so I know roughly the consistency that I want to get the effect that I'm looking for. So when I'm happy with that, then what I'll start to do is I'll start to slap it on and see whether it's going to work. It'd be nice if it does. It does bulk it out nicely. I'm just a bit unsure whether I've done it right. If you know better, do drop a comment below. That would be awesome. So, um, yeah, I'm hoping that what will happen is it will dry nice and um, solidly over the top of the paper and uh, give a good hard base. This is going to end up using a lot of compound if it doesn't. So yeah, I'll get this done. The compound is going to go over the entirety of the model. Um, so we're going to be going all over it, but I'm not going to go over the tower, over the uh, um, over the column, obviously. Um, this is just going to be building up the contours and getting the uh, getting the terrain to be the correct shape. But yeah, I'll get this done. It's probably going to take me a good couple of hours, and when it's done, I'll bring you back and I'll bring you along for the next step and we'll see whether this this idea with the uh, with the newspaper works or whether it was a false economy and I have to rip it all off and start again <laughs> we shall see there we are, one batch <laughs> this is going to take some time well, that's all dried, so the next step is to get my scenic glue which is watered down PVA and paint that in dab that in in the same way as I did with the um, with the paint uh, scenic paint um, and drop some um, flocks apologies losing my words there drop some flocks over it so that's going to basically be exactly the same thing so we will very very carefully position the glue around the edges so that none drops in. We're nearly done on this now, which is cool. Uh, I need to make another few more actually to uh, display and organize all of my 20 millimeter miniatures. But anyway, yeah, so we will, I, I will do most of this off camera because it will be very similar to this um, and there's no point in watching it all. So we put a little bit of glue down, and then we put a little bit of the light green and then a little bit of the dark green like this I always do at least two colours of flock because life is not monochrome and here I am actually making use of shop bought which is not something I often do but I'm running a bit low on my own home stock so I'm going to need to make some more I will be trying a new technique my recommendation Monday from um, April was Welton Bear Club and he just did a fantastic video on how to make flocks obviously I've done it many times but I'm going to give his technique a go because it's always nice to try new things out but anyway yeah so that's all we're going to do just going to put flock over the entirety of this base just like that and then let it to dry so I'll get that done and I'll bring you back to show you what it looks like when it's done and when we come to the final step so this is now dry and the final step is I'm going to empty off the excess like so and then I'm going to paint my terrain glue all over the wall of it including going into the middle and this will seal the edges and seal in this uh, flock and make this really really solid so um, just just going to go and do this really uh, also just to highlight the only reason that I only did that tiny section uh, first off is just because I was filming. Um, you can do something this big in one go in terms of flocking and in terms of doing the sand and the paint. You don't need to do tiny sections. Uh, once I stopped filming, I just did the whole rest of it as one. So I just want to make that clear. Uh, I'm not suggesting that you do teeny tiny sections. You don't need to. It doesn't dry that quickly unless you're living in an oven, <laughs> which, which I'm not right now. Sometimes I am. Sometimes it gets that hot. Anyway, enough rambling. So I'm going to go and do the rest of this now and then that will dry and it will be completed. 
So then it will be a case of finishing off the rest of the bases for all of the miniatures, making another one, and then I'll be able to um, know what my miniatures are, and, and then I'll show you how I'm going to go about labelling, because I do have a good idea on that. That's dry, so now I'm going to come along with my black terrain paint. I'm going to slap it over the whole thing. So this is house paint mixed with water, PVA and some dishwasher, dishwashing liquid, washing up liquid, whatever you want to call it. Um, and this is going to both seal and give a nice base coat for all the other colours that are going to come along. So I've got a big brush. Um, and I'm just going to come and do this. You'll notice that I haven't put any modelling compound around where the actual eye is going to sit. That's because I've not yet fully decided how I'm going to do it. I've got some thoughts, but I'm still kind of playing with them in my head. And I didn't want to do this process now, where I could potentially slop black paint onto my nicely painted eye. So I decided to leave it off. I will probably fit it next, but I'm not sure. Anyway, that's enough rambling for me for this. This is literally just painting it black as the uh, Rolling Stones said. black undercoat has gone on well and it's now completely dry so what I'm now going to do is going to come along with this kind of mustardy yellow and wash that over so I've got a, a vat of water a pot of water here um, and the same large brush and what I'm going to do is I'm just going to wash it over and this will give uh, the black will give the uh, um, shadows um, but this will hopefully give a nice base color so um, so that I can then stick my t um, sequins on top and it will look nice so I'm just going to use the lid of the pot to build up a bit of a wash. And the idea is, is this just basically fills in. I'm not trying to do it as a too thicker level layer. I do want it to be rather watered down and wash, but like, like that. So I'm going to go over the whole lot. Hopefully this will work. This kind of thing is not something I've done before. So I am experimenting and learning on the job, as I often do. So yeah, it won't take me very long, but I will skip recording for now because uh, it's just going to be that. So I'll bring you back when I come to the next step. That might even be sequins, uh, which will be exciting. Start putting them on. Um, still need to work out finally how I'm going to stick the eye in as well. Um, but yeah, let's get this wash on. So you can see the ship that I printed. I'm really, really pleased with it actually. I'm probably going to print another couple um, because it's so good but what I need to do now this has been washed but not cured because I'm going to attempt, attempt to get rid of all of the supports before I cure it which just makes it a little bit easier to clean up um, so I'm going to do that uh, and once I've done that I'll stick it in the curing machine um, and let it go off because it's uh, obviously a resin print uh, I won't film all of this because I'm going to be fiddling around quite a lot like this normally with these prints you can just come in and like tear it off I can probably do a little bit here you can hear it pop but with this being so close and so finely detailed on all of the rigging I'm just coming in with a knife so um, hopefully this is going to work nicely I'm not going to break it but the good thing is is because this is going to be a shipwreck if I break it it's not the end of the world is it <coughs> excuse me frog in my throat so I'll get that done um, and then cure it and then I'll bring you along for the next step so there he is, you can see the smell guy. Looks great sat in there, but he's just a little bit too high. Uh, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna come along with this tool here, and I'm just gonna carve out a bit more of a depth for where I've done there. So let's get that heated up. Um, I'm really, really starting to enjoy this tool now that I know how to use it. <laughs> uh, before I didn't know how to use it. So yeah, we'll just carve that out.
There we are, that sits in much more, much nicer now. I may want to carve a little bit more out, but I'll have a play around. Um, I might just need to come down a little bit further over this side, but that's going to look much better. There we are, that's much better. Yes, I'm happy with that. So yeah, I can now, you can now see that I'm actually going to be able to really fit this in quite nicely without doing too much additional filling. And I should be able to fill behind just with sequins and stuff just to have that gap. And that's going to look right. I'm very, very, very pleased with that. Regular viewers will know that there's two things that I really, really love. One of them is making things with Rosie. That's a, that's a real highlight. Second thing is when I find a company that just goes above and beyond and is awesome to work with. And here in front of you we have a delivery which arrived today from a company called Blotz, uh, B-L-O-T-Z in the UK. And frankly, yeah, I'm, I'm pretty, pretty impressed with their service. They sent this, I ordered this uh, um, January, uh, January, very early January, um, and they sent it really, really quickly. And it got to my address in Germany. And then for some reason, without telling me, the courier, who really upset me and pissed me off a lot, rejected it, just bounced it, and it went straight back to them. They didn't even tell me that they'd rejected it. Apparently they said that there was some, uh, some owings for import duty, which is rubbish because there shouldn't have been. Um, and uh, so I emailed asking where it had got to, um, and a couple of days after I emailed asking the, the Blots guys, they replied saying, well, it's just got here. <laughs> That's really odd. So, uh, so they uh, agreed, to, I mean, I offered to pay fully for them to ship it again because it was completely not their fault, obviously. How, how would they know? Uh, but they agreed to split that half and half and they've shipped it direct to me in Bulgaria. And it has taken a long time to get here, but that isn't their fault either. They shipped it, gave me tracking information. Literally the day after um, it arrived back in the UK, they'd put it all straight out again after uh, I'd paid again, obviously. And it has arrived today. So I can really highly recommend Blots. Um, they're communications were superb um, and they were very very nice to deal with even in a situation which could have been quite stressful and frustrating for them they were always very polite um, and understanding and we worked a solution which was good for both of us so i have this now and i can tell you i'm also impressed looking at how well it was packed um, and how nicely it has come in the box. So let me quickly show you what I've got. These will appear on the channel um, in builds, uh, uh, various builds, probably not specifically, but I'll always try and highlight that it's blots when I'm doing them. So I've got some tables and benches. I've got a privy because you always need a privy. I've got some hitching posts. I've got some church furniture, which is actually going to go into the church, which is nearly finished. I've got some school furniture. Uh, a lot of these are going to be for use uh, with the um, with Blood and Plunder, uh, apart from the ones that are obviously Western, which is for when I get into a Western game. So we've got the upright piano. And then I've picked some bigger kits as well. So first of all, um, and this is what, uh, what I was looking for when I went to them. So we've got some Middle East, a Middle Eastern compound. That just looks amazing, doesn't it? A big old building with a compound. Um, we've got... Another one here, like a two-story one, very similar to the Sarissa, but I wanted to have some variety, which is why I went for these. Um, and another one, um, which is basically slightly different. You can see the doors are in different places on these two kits. Um, so they've got a little bit of variety just to have different windows, uh, just to make it a bit a bit more interesting. And they will be going in, uh, be put, be, be being built for uh, Blood and Plunder. Um, That's nice, uh, kind of like um, South um, American and uh, Caribbean kind of style buildings. So there we are, Blots, highly recommended. Just want to say thanks to them if they ever watch this video, which they probably won't, but that's fine. Um, I, I'm going to shout about them a lot because they deserve it. You get some rubbish service from some companies nowadays, but there are companies out there that are superb and Blots appear to be one of them. something for Rosie and I'm very very pleased about it this here is a little kind of model or whatever that they sell in the shops around here and she loves it she's had two of these now the first one I managed to fix because it didn't get broken too badly when she dropped it this one was given to her by a lovely shop assistant um, everyone loves Rosie here <laughs> can't blame them um, and within literally hours of getting home, she dropped it and it smashed on the floor. And obviously that made me very sad and made her very sad. Um, it's a little kind of like ladybird, basically. So what I did was I asked Quinn, uh, I am a member of his Patreon and he will make me models once a month. 
he'll make me a model a month. I asked Quinn to make me one, which he did. And it's perfect, as you can see, it's perfect height, it's perfect uh, dimensions. It just, just looks perfect. I'm very, very pleased with it indeed. And uh, what I'm gonna do now, um, and I'm not gonna film all of it because I, um, I, I don't want to, I want to, but I hold this close to my face and what have you, I wanna make this right. But I will show you it in basically in stages and talk through what colors I've used. I'm gonna paint this up for her. <laughs> so I primed it already with the standard Vallejo Gray primer that I use, and I'm, uh, that's uh, been done and it's dry. Um, and what I'm now going to do is I'm going to come along and I'm going to start to pick out the different colours um, and I think I've got all the colours I need. For example, I have my orange fire which is going to work really, really well uh, here and we have flat red which is going to work really, really well um, when blended in with that. And obviously you've got the black, you've got some yellows and that's pretty much it. So it's going to be a pretty simple paint job. Uh, as I say, I'll bring you along. I'm going to do a little bit now, not too much. It's late. I'm very, very tired. Had a long day. Um, it's a little bit of flesh colour. <laughs> I'm not sure that uh, <laughs> I'm, I'm not sure actually that that's correct in terms of what uh, ladybirds are like. But you can see there's some flesh. So I might just paint the flesh on now, just to get it started, and maybe some of the black highlights. Um, and I'll bring you and I'll show you what it looks like at the end of tonight. Um, and then um, it will carry on. I would very much like to get this done this week so that I can give it to her on uh, on Saturday. And it is now. What day is it? Wednesday. Wednesday. So I've got a couple of days to finish this. So let's see whether I can do it um, and I'll bring you along for the ride. I'm, uh, and thank you so much, Quinn. You really, I mean, I, I almost tears in my eyes when I saw how, how, how good it was and how well it printed. Um, it's just, she's going to love it, I'm sure. So just a little bit of time, not very much, but I've done a uh, basic skin tone from Vallejo on the, uh, on the skin. Uh, just a couple of coats. I probably need to do some more. Um, there and then I've just done the um, basic black from Vallejo um, on the back of the head and on the, the um, on the sleeves or the arms or whatever. <laughs> it's a bit strange. It's definitely not a real uh, creature, is it? But it's still cool. So yes, yeah, so I'm gonna um, call it there. I'm pretty tired, um, and I'll be back to that tomorrow to do hopefully a lot more. Um, I, I couldn't get it to mount it onto a handle, which is why I'm not doing the bottom. I'm gonna do the top half. And then I'll do the last little bit down here um, at the end, just the uh, just the black boots at the end, probably. Um, so yeah, I'm pleased with that. A couple more coats of the flesh, and then I'll be able to varnish that and then hold by the head and finish the rest of the body, basically. So, cool. So I'm so happy. I've got it done. Very, very pleased with how that looks. I'll point the camera down and show them next to each other in a second, but I've just this second finished painting. And wow, I mean, it does look perfect. Thank you so much, Quinn. You've knocked it out of the park in this sculpt for me. Um, and I know that Rosie's gonna love it. Uh, what I've got left to do now is a bit of varnishing because obviously it's gonna get relatively heavily handled. So I'm gonna uh, varnish it a couple of times and it will now be ready for the weekend, which yeah, brilliant, really easy to paint. The indentations he put in for the mouth and eyes were great. Um, the size was perfect when I scaled it um, across the width that I knew the width was. Then it's come out at exactly the right height, so he's really, really nailed those proportions. Um, and yeah, the painting was relatively easy as well, which is always good. So I'll put, them, put the camera down now, show them side to side, so you can see um, just how close I got it. So there we are, as you can see, it's pretty close. I'm pretty, pretty impressed. <laughs> I'm actually quite shocked at myself for managing to do that. Um, I was a bit worried about the wet blending, but I think it's come out quite nicely. Um, and it certainly does look the same. I think she's gonna love it. Uh, I made use of the colors that I suggested I might. So we have orange fire in there, and we have the flat red, um, and we have the normal black. And that's actually it. Um, oh yes, the other color, sorry. Um, yellow, deep yellow. Was the, uh, was the other colour that I used. Um, and just those colours, um, from the red to the, uh, via the orange to the yellow was enough to do that lovely sh um, kind of wet blend across. Um, and then matte black did the rest of it. Um, and the flesh is basic skin tone. So there we are, done. Smashed it, very, very pleased. Uh, so tomorrow I will come and varnish that a couple of times. Um, it is now, what, Thursday? So yeah, I'll varnish that a couple of times tomorrow. And then, uh, yeah, I can give it to on Saturday, fantastic. So let's talk layout, because I really need to crack on with this, actually. <laughs> I've just been ignoring it. Thinking, though, I have been thinking, but I haven't been making any progress. And as I'd like to do, I like to put about 20 minutes a day into this, and I've just put no time in actual creating for the past couple of days. 
I've primed the ship. Um, I've not painted it because I'm not sh totally sure how much damage I'm going to do to it. And so there's no point in painting it if I'm going to start gouging holes in it. And I am going to do some damage in it because it is shipwrecked. So the idea is, is the ship's going to be sitting roughly here and it'll be canted and kind of like what have you like this. Um, at least this sail will be down over here and this sail will be down as well. Um, and I'm probably going to attempt with a rotary tool to, to rip up the other sails as well so they look like they're in shreds because that's how it would be. But this, but this actual um, mast is going to be down and on the ice. So the ice will be probably, I'll probably make the ice just with uh, plaster mixed with some white paint because I want it to be nice and pure and obviously I'll be coming along with some blue and what have you to make it look icy. Um, and that's going to have, maybe have, even have a rock or, or some kind of a cliff um, over here in front. There'll be a camp here with, I think, some crosses, so some people have died, sadly, um, and some tents. And then going off the back, because this is going to be the front, going off the back will be a trail going through the snow. It's going to hopefully be a simple build because, well, I want to do a simple one after last one, which was just crazily tall and, and big. I want this to be small. Um, and I think the first thing I'm gonna do, and what I'm gonna do now, is I'm going to get the rock and stick the rock in here um, and glue that down, leave that overnight. And then what I can do is once that's dry, then I can come along and I can um, put the plaster on, fix the ship in place um, and move on from there. While the rock is drying, um, which I will bring you along for, I will also clip off this front, um, like I say, this front sail, um, and then get the rotary tool and attempt to trash the sails on the on the rest of them. Now the very good thing is, obviously, if I don't make a good job, I can print another one. The benefit of 3D printing, uh, I don't want to have to. I'd like to use this one. So yeah, there we are. We have a plan, we have a layout, uh, and we have some next steps. So I'm going to gather together some materials for making this kind of outcropping and I'll bring you along when I come to shape it and stick it on. So when I recorded the last clip, I was seriously thinking about carving a, a, a rock face. However, I suddenly noticed a box of stones, as I'm sure everyone has on their shelf. <laughs> and in that box of stones was this fantastic deep red looking Thing. I mean, look at that, isn't it brilliant? Isn't it lovely? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use that. I'm going to glue that down here. Um, and I'm currently umming and ahhing about whether I'm going to use my gator glue or whether I'm going to use PVA. Um, I think I might use PVA because it won't, um, it, it won't, won't spread anywhere. Um, that um, gator glue, as brilliant as it is, does sometimes kind of expand a bit too much. And this will only be holding it in place while I put the, um, the rest of the of the stuff around it, so the uh, the um, plaster for the snow fields. So I'll just put a dollop of PVA under that. When that dries, that should hold it enough. Um, I'll put a little bit more on actually, just around here. Um, and then what I'll do is I'm going to start looking at this ship and looking at actually breaking it apart and carving it up, which I will bring you along for for a bit of it. I'm a little bit nervous about what it's going to be like. I'll probably have a bit of a play and then show you whether it's worked or not rather than doing it all on camera because uh, it might take a little bit of focus and concentration. But yeah, there we are. So we've got this fantastic red rock which is going to be really uh, striking against the snowfield. So after a couple of full starts, I'm making use of this tack life uh, which I need to thank Quinn for pointing me to, as always, as I always do. Um, and I've managed, as you see, to clip off and destroy this uh, front sail, um, some of it literally destroyed, went pinging across um, when I attempted to use my snips um, and when I attempted to use my crafting knife. But with this, it's working okay. Now, I'm not going to be able to talk because I'm sanding down um, resin and you need to make use of one of these if you're sanding resin. Don't, don't screw around with this stuff. So I'm going to put this back on now. I just brushed up before I filmed um, and I'll show you how it looks and then I'll turn the camera off again and finish the rest of the actual ship uh, but I'll work on this one for now. So yeah, so just using a little ball sanding uh, tool on this. Um, so let's get this mask on and show you what it looks like. <coughs> So 
so there you are. You can see that that works really well. It's not very quick, but it does work. So I'm going to carry on now. I'm going to turn the camera off. I'll get the rest of the sails done, do the rest of the damage on the ship, um, and I'll bring you back and show what it looks like when it's completely finished. So now start the great gold <laughs> application. So I've got all these sequins and I've got more coming. Um, I bought loads and loads and I don't think I bought enough. So I've ordered loads and loads and loads more. I've got so many, so many sequins, it's crazy. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start in a small area just now before I go to bed. It's nearly the end of the day for me and see how well it works. Because if it doesn't work, then I've wasted a fair bit of money on sequins, but I'll also have to think of an alternative. So I'm gonna, first of all, attempt to do this using PVA. So my plan will be to use neat PVA, as you can see I've got here, that's what I'm, that's what I'm doing to go putting on here now. Use neat PVA quite thickly to coat where I want to put the sequins. And then once I've finished doing this application, come over the top with scenic glue, which is more watered down, and let that so kind of like settle in. Uh, now, Angela said I'd probably have to put the place these individually, um, but I'm hoping I don't, <laughs> because ain't no one got time for that, and I certainly haven't. So um, yeah, it's just going to be a case of dropping them on, and letting it dry, and hopefully then sealing it over the top and seeing that whether it works or not. Now that's one of the reasons why I've done this undercoat of the goldy kind of like yellowy colour. So if I miss anywhere, I should, it should still look okay. But I do want this to be relatively well covered with the gold. So that's the whole point, obviously. So I will get this scattered leave it overnight, upend this onto a sheet and see what's stuck, <laughs> basically. Let's see how well this works. I might actually come along now with a dropper and some, uh, and some scenic glue and just dropper that on top as well just to make that a little bit uh, Maybe, a little, maybe dry a little bit better um, and, and have this depth look to it. Because actually the way that's looking now, I'm really it's glittering like a, like a crazy thing. That's going to be absolutely incredible when the, this is finished, if I cover it all with sequins. <laughs> so yeah, so what I'm going to do now, I'm going to go and get a dropper um, and my scenic glue and just uh, drop that over the top and then I'll let it to dry. Um, and, I'm, and I'll bring you back in the morning. We'll have a look and see what it looks like. So it looks like it's worked. I'm not going to scrape at it because yeah, I'm going to definitely need to put another coat down. But it's still sprinkly and shiny. And they're stuck on well enough. They're not all stuck on. But what I'm going to do now is I'm going to carry on and uh, uh, keep sprinkling, keep sprinkling until I run out of sequins and hope that the replacements, um, which arrived in Germany today, get here before the end of the month so I can finish this up. So I'll do all the sequining that I can and then finish the rest of the diorama and then hopefully um, have more sequins arrive in time. Here it goes. So that's uh, dried okay with the PVA, it's obviously not great. Um, and um, what I'm now gonna do uh, is start applying some plaster. So this is polycell, polyfiller, mixed up with a bit of water and a bit of PVA, just to give it some elasticity. And what I'm gonna be doing is I'm gonna be putting it on, I might even put it on with a brush because I can just slop it on and then spread it out. That's probably going to be the easiest way to do this. So if I just scoop it out with the spoon and spread it around. And this is the snow and the ice field, obviously. So, let's see if that's enough. And what I'll do is when I've got this spread, how I want it to be, then I will come along and I will press the, the ship in. It gives a good amount of working time, this. So I'm not in a major hurry. And it does go off quite hard. So hopefully it will be hard wearing enough. I don't want it to be completely flat. I'm pretty happy with it having some ripples and what have you, because that's what ice shelves are like. And what I'll be able to do is I'll be able to carve this once it's dry. So the idea is, is that I'm going to carve in 
like some cracks and what have you, particularly where behind where the ships come from so you can see that it's maybe been driven on by a storm or something um, and is now stuck fast. So I actually mixed up exactly the right amount, that was good luck. Okay, so let's keep sp spreading this around and uh, get this looking how I want it to. Okay, so that's now spread. I will be coming along and painting this while it's in place. I think that's going to be a bit easier. Um, although the other alternative is, is that I could press this in and leave a gap. So get a... I think I'm actually going to leave that in and then come and paint it afterwards carefully. And the idea is, and I'll do this now as well, is that we're gonna have just the suggestion of a track and I'll make more of this. I may need to come in and grind that in, actually. It's not holding it enough. No, it's still too liquid. I have to keep an eye on that and come back when it's, uh, when it's less uh, liquid. But you can see there we have our water, frozen ice and our ship stuck in so I have to keep an eye on it make sure I don't get any anything like get flown over the edges um, too badly um, and that should now dry nicely in the next half hour or so um, and at one point it will become uh, so I can actually um, start to carve it and shape it I'll bring you along when I get to that so you can see what I do but for now I'm just gonna leave that alone and uh, yeah, pretty pleased so far. That's, uh, that's gonna look like a really nice little scene. I'm not going to go into huge detail on this in an unboxing and show you everything that I've got, but I had another delivery today. Uh, this was ordered during Patmacon, Paint All the Miniatures Online Convention, um, and represents me buying into Moonstone. Now I've played Moonstone online a couple of times once, it was just a very quick and hilarious demo game. And then I did a training game. They do a training game on their Discord every Wednesday, which is great fun. I'm hoping to join again next week. But before I'd had anything to do with it, um, I had to get it. I, I mean, it, it, yeah, I could tell there was going to be a game I'd like, and I really love it. Um, it might even take over SPG if we get pl playing it. But the main reason was this particular little awesome thing here, which is the Goblin Airship. I mean, it is literally an inflated frog with a goblin with a machine gun hanging off the bottom. I mean. How cool is that? <laughs> so I picked that one up. That was a that was a major the the major thing that got me into it. I was looking forward to seeing Moonstone and finding out about it during Patmacon. Uh, on top of that, I got the two player starter set, uh, which comes with enough to get you going. So you actually do get um, quite a few cool models in there, including Doug Lafatchin, which is one, one I really wanted. Um, it might even be what I start to paint up first. Uh, you get the rule book. Um, one of the reasons why I'm filming this is because I need to do this. I've not done it yet. It's not a bad smell. It's not the best new book smell, actually. Not the best. I rank that a 5 out of 10. Anyway, friends, gnomes, countrymen, I come for buried moonstones and to raise them. The evil that men do lives after them. The good is oft interred with their bones, so let it be with moonstones. There we are. So the idea of the game is you basically attempt to dig up moonstones and that's it. Try and, like, kill each other in crazy ways. It's a very fun game. It has a bluffing mechanic, which is superb, um, and it has simple uh, combat rules, and but massive combos, so you can play it really simply, but as you get better and better, you can do more and more and more. It seems like a really, really deep game. Um, so yeah, so I've got some fawns, I've got some um, fairies, I've got uh, a, a, a stretch and a tumble down street, which is another uh, for, the, for the humans. Um, I've got a couple of kind of like big big monster types, so giants and what have you. Just a nice variety of miniatures and I'm going to look forward to painting them. I will bring you along, I'll probably be painting these on, on camera. Um, I'm not sure whether it will be my next project or not. 
but certainly I'm very much looking forward to getting them painted up and I'm looking forward to playing again, whether that be online or physically, if I actually ever get to play another game physically. Um, so yeah, there we are. Well, this hasn't happened for a little while, but I forgot to turn the microphone on. So what we have here is me talking about the basing for the Alice and the Dragon. So my idea is that the Dragon and Alice are sat in a little dell in a little hollow with a tree going over the top of them. And uh, I'm going to use some modeling compound to build up the banks of this dell. And it's only going to be the very edges of the banks, which are actually on the diorama. So I'm using a pencil to mark out where those are going to be and then I will mix some of the modeling compound and get that smoothed in place. So sorry for the lack of real time audio. That's what's going on. Make sure that my microphone's on this time um, and this is dried. So what I'm going to do is come along as I say and I'm just going to paint it all black. Uh, and I'm not only going to paint the top black but I'm going to paint the sides and the bottom. Um, I've decided I'm not going to paint the tree, so I'm going to paint that with PVA to seal it. So um, I'm not going to paint the tree black because I'm going to leave it with its natural colours, because actually it's quite a nice natural colour, it works quite well. So I'll get that done, probably take application now, let that dry, which doesn't take very long, and then turn it over and paint the bottom. Um, and I'll bring it back for the next step, which will be applying the texture I'm going to put a little bit of sand on this I think just to give it a little bit of dirt texture underneath the grass so yeah I will bring you back for that next step shortly more teeny tiny printing so at the back behind the ship there are some little tents now when they print out in real life uh, well they were, they're about 10 centimeters long actually so I scaled them down massively these ones here are um, three millimeters long and then the slightly larger one at the back there is five millimeters long. Uh, and what I'm gonna do now uh, is I'm gonna take these downstairs and I'm gonna paint them. And I'm also gonna paint the ship. So um, th that will be done with wood and then with canvas and I'll do the, uh, the little tents as ca as with canvas and then I can stick them in place and can start or I can uh, start to sculpt in the track um, and add maybe the graveyard. So yeah, flying to completion on this. Really, really enjoying it. Really enjoying the fact of how uh, I've done a simpler build this time, but I'm really loving the story it's telling. I think it's gonna look great. So yeah, I will bring you back, um, tell you what paints I used, but it's probably gonna be uh, Vallejo canvas for the tents and for the sails and Vallejo old wood for the um, wood <laughs> and then some wash from um, Agrax Earthshade. So that's what I'll probably do. Um, uh, but I'll let you know. So this is what 21,000 sequins looks like. <laughs> and that's all I had and I ran out. And what I've realized after I've got to this stage, which is really frustrating, is I got some gold, super chrome gold, which would have been absolutely superb. And the purpose I did, and the idea I had, was to spray that all over it and then just add the sequins as a kind of sparkle and a texture. And I clean forgot that I'd gotten, gone and bought this. It only cost a few quid, so it's not a huge amount of money wasted. But it is frustrating because, well, I forgot. <laughs> and now I don't really want to spray it on because I'll go over the top of these nice sequins and, and waste them. So probably I will just not use that spray. A um, bit frustrating. I've ordered about the same quantity of sequins again, a little bit more. Um, I hope I have enough. If I don't, then I don't. Um, if I don't have enough, then I'll probably hide the area behind the um, column first so I can take some pictures um, and order some more in. <laughs> so we shall see. Uh, but yeah, 22,000 sequins are on that right now and not even, not even close to enough. For my next project on the 20 minutes, I'm going to be painting up the Moonstone starter set. Uh, which is just superb. So I'll prime them up um, and I will be painting them just in 20 minutes. And what I think I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go back to filming a very short post 20 minute clip 
to show how they're going, talk about what paints I did, um, because I really enjoyed doing that and I've missed that. And also, I'm just so impressed with these. I want to shout about this game. I've had so much fun playing it uh, and when I've played it, and now I own it and I've seen the miniatures. I really can't recommend them enough. The second thing that I'm going to be doing as part of my 20 minutes is I'm building up a table of terrain for it, uh, which can also obviously be used for any other things. So I've got some like dead trees here. Um, I've got this cool, uh, all 3D printed, this cool kind of like um, ancient monument head, which I'm going to put inside, uh, put on a terrain base. Um, and I've printed out this um, tree trunk house, which has the tree trunk with a door in it and a cool little roof. <laughs> so that's really good. Uh, and I've also got right now in front of me a little kind of pile of barrels and, and uh, chest and what have you. So I'm just going to print out, uh, paint up those as well as part of this um, and I'm going to be continuing to print out and adding more to that pile. Um, I've got some stuff which is going to be printing out over the, over the next couple of days uh, which is also going to be for this. So I'm probably going to mix and match. Once I've finished painting the starter set then I'll jump back over to the Warbats um, but for this evening I'm going to make a start on some of these amazing miniatures and some of this terrain I've printed. So I kind of wish but I hadn't said I was going to do this in my 20 minutes because I'm having so much fun painting them. I've managed to get these skin tones on all but one of the miniatures. Uh, the one I didn't is the bug, um, and I'm not totally sure what colour I'm going to do. And I've also managed to get some of the metal work done. So as you can see on these two here, I've gone for um, steel. Um, this flashing dude has got more skin than you can see. His uh, big beak is hiding his big belly. Um, and I've also done here on the um, uh, some uh, like of the chainmail silver. So that was 20 minutes. As I say, I wish I'd kind of could continue. I could do an hour, I reckon. Um, but yeah, really good fun sculpts to paint and uh, looking forward to tomorrow already. So as I say, I've done exactly the colors I said I would and I've actually gone ahead and stuck the tent in. So let me zoom that in a bit. You can see they are teeny, teeny, tiny. But I think they look quite good. <laughs> I'm actually quite pleased. So I'm going to let that settle in my head, work out what the next thing I want to do is. Um, certainly the plan is to have footprints going off or a track or a path going off in this direction. I'm wondering whether I shouldn't put like a splash of blood on the ground over here where it looks like they may have hunted. And I absolutely do want to have some, um, some gravestones over here by the, uh, by the rock. So yeah, very pleased. Very simple, but exactly what I wanted to do. So I was asked for an update on the elephant I started painting up in my awesome paint and chat with Tim. I've got another one next week, as it happened. <laughs> next, uh, next Saturday, I think it is. Um, and here it is. So uh, I've had a lot of fun with this. Uh, it was a very simple paint job in the end, uh, but I did take my time. Um, I picked out some of the stitching in gold. Um, and I went over the skin. I did that with... Um, London grey and then I came along with some contrast paints just to give it a little bit more texture and it's worked really well I'm really pleased with that. Uh, the basing is Geek Gaming, um, uh, the, qu the quick basing um, and yeah pretty very, pretty pleased with that this is going to be quite a fun one uh, either to use it as a um, uh, as a non-combatant in a, um, a SPG like a capture the messenger type thing or uh, for, for any other kind of skirmish game it'll be quite a lot of fun. So there we are, that is the Dwarf Trader on Elephant. So this week I was going to 3D print up some fences to start to put around the property. But I realised actually what I need to do um, is finish off this edge. Uh, and also I decided I didn't want to 3D print them, I wanted to order them. So I've ordered some in, they'll be in in the next week or so. Um, and that gives me a chance to start to do this retaining wall. What I'm going to do is I'm going to use das clay, um, and I have decided, I've taken the, uh, the other end off, uh, but that's where it sits. I have decided that what I'm going to do is I'm going to put a brick wall all the way along around here and all the way around to um, around the far headland, um, which is just out of shot. Let me just move the camera slightly. Um, there we are. So basically all the way around to where the road is going to go um, and around to here. And I'll probably just use rubble and, and smooth that one down there. So it's going to be a long run of bricks. And I'm going to use my um, Green Stuff World Rollers and Das Clay. Um, and I'm just going to basically come along with PVA 
and stick it straight to the polystyrene here um, and then let that dry. So that's what I'm going to do now because once I've done that then I can put the modeling compound here, I can do the bridge um, and I can finish off all this scenicing and terrain um, and I can also look at doing over the top of the of the tunnel which I'm still umming and ahhing about having open or not. I'm kind of going both ways on it. Um, what I think I might try to do <laughs> is have it removable because I want to be able to get in and clean the tracks. That's the main thing. Um, so yeah, so I'm just gonna now get my air dry clay out, gonna get my rolling pins out and I'm gonna start to apply the bricks. Um, I'll show you the first one and then I'll show you the finished, put, finished uh, work before it's drying. So I'll show you where I get to the end of this quick building session. Um, but yeah, it's, uh, it's gonna be a big change this. I'm really excited about it. So here we are, we have my chopping board that I use for roller, rolling out my clay on, keep it clean. I have a large mega plane roller, which, yeah, I did have a wooden one and it just kept getting stuck to it, so this wasn't very expensive. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to do this in sections, I'm not going to go too crazy or try to do too much, I've probably even got too much clay out already. Um, so I'll roll it out pretty thin, that's one thing you need to do with uh, DAS, um, is not have it too thick when you start to uh, do your um, texture um, and this is a lot of old off cuts all glued together so it might all shoved together so it may not actually roller that well as you can see um, it's often false economy to try to mix two different sections of clay so let's move that out of the way so I'll get this rolled out um, and then we'll do the texture um, I'll just get this done Okay, as you can see, false economy to have tried to save the old offcuts. I've pulled them all out, <laughs> so I won't do that again. So now I've got my small bricks roller from Green Stuff Weld. Um, I wished I'd had a large bricks one, but I don't. So it's going to be small bricks. Um, so what you do is um, just make sure that it's nicely separated from the base before you start rollering. Um, you notice I don't have had any additives or anything to this at all. I just go for it without putting any kind of like Vaseline or anything and what we're going to do is you press across it with a constant continual motion and there you've got it done so I'm now going to carry this through go and stick it onto the side with some PVA and continue uh, and I'll show you what it looks like when it's all done so I thought actually it might be quite interesting for you to see how I go about applying it as well. So I've done one section as you can see. So I just get a lump of uh, PVA glue onto my plate and then brush that onto the surface that I'm going to stick to, which is going to be where it continues. And I'll hide the joins. This one particularly won't be a problem because that's where the bridge is, so there'll be an upright there. Some kind of a bridge section going on. Um, but yeah, I'll hide the joins with like creepers or dirt. It's not a very scientific method, but this worked very well for the train around the Christmas tree. So I think it'll work well for this. So we just slop a load of PVA on, um, and this will help it to uh, stick very nicely, but also it's, it doesn't crack when you use this. I don't mix PVA in with my dashed clay. Um, lots and lots and lots of people go, oh, you should do. Whenever I've done that, it has caused terrible cracking. So. With that done, I have my rolled out next section over here and I'm going to very carefully lift it off of the um, off of the roller, rolled out area. I think I've put enough glue, if I haven't I can always add more, it's fine. And then just drop it in place, like so. Um, and you want it to go over the top slightly, that's absolutely fine, because then you can trim that off with a trimmer. And I have just not put enough PVA on to get that length, so I'll add a little bit more. I go through a lot of PVA. Here we are. So that's in there. And then press it in gently. Don't go too crazy, otherwise you may start to muddy up the, the roller a little bit too much. And again, I'm not worrying too much about the bottom because I'll be coming along obviously and doing some scenicing down there. And then finally, I've got this little cutter tool. And again, I don't go too crazy or too accurate. 
just use it actually as a both as a cutter and also to really make sure that the clay is tight and kind of smeared over the top because then when I come with the modeling compound I can really tie that in together. So you can see it's quite a quick process. Most of the time is taken with the rolling and the prep of the, of the hair dry clay and now we've got another section. So I've got another maybe two rollers to do to finish. So next one will probably go to here and the final will go to here and then I'll let that dry. Um, and uh, yeah, pretty pleased with how that's looking. Well, there we are, that's all done. Didn't take me very long at all. I'm really pleased with that. So I'll let that dry now um, and then <clears throat> I'll come along and paint it. Um, but first of all, I'll probably come and do the modeling compound over the top and work on the bridge. Um, but yeah, that's what, well, it's a little bit scruffy at this join here. So I might just have to have a pipe or some um, additional brickwork. So maybe a, uh, a buttress or something coming out here just to hide that join, but that's fine. Uh, you can work with those things. Don't let them stress you at all. If, you, if you're building something, <clears throat> it's not making mistakes. It's how you cope with them that matters. <laughs> so yeah, really, really good to get that a little bit further along. And um, for the next project, like I say, modeling compound here, and think about how I'm going to work uh, at the top of this hill and over this uh, tunnel uh, because yeah I do need to. Um, I probably need to think about how I'm going to fix the tunnel in place um, and uh, potentially um, like I've said I might actually just have it oh not that over but I might actually just have it so that it's not a full tunnel it's half the tunnel and then it's exposed so I can get in and clean the tracks but we shall see I'll, I'll come to that next um, that's for more thinking for now I'm going to let that dry. Well, there we are. That was a far more productive week than I remembered, which is probably the refrain of these outros that is most common. Uh, I am stood here again, hasn't been uh, stood here for a couple of weeks because I have actually got something to check off on my Guardian's Hangout. Paint a model in a different scheme than Games Workshop. And obviously those, um, those Warbats, I went a bit crazy on some of them, so I've been able to check that off. Uh, there's one I'm also very close to, which is paint at least six models on 40 millimeter bases. Uh, I need to get one more of those Warbats done and then I'm about to take that off because you can't use a model for more than one of the squares apart from the middle one, which is paint more than 1,500 points of models. I suppose I should start to track that, shouldn't I? <laughs> I might do that from next week. So yeah, a really good week. I really hope you enjoyed the video. Um, I hope that some of it has inspired you. Let me know. I'd love to hear from you. Drop a comment below. Um, there's a few links as well in the description below to things I've used or sites that uh, I've talked about during the vlog. So go and visit them as well. Uh, I'm not sponsored by any of them. Um, I just... Uh, I think it's really nice to recommend people, so go and check them out. Um, and yeah, thank you very much for watching. I'll wrap up as I always do by saying please stay healthy, stay safe, and stay well.